Hi, third grade. Last week, we used several different elements of art to create our positive and negative space picture. We used line, shape, texture, color, and space. This week, we'll use all those elements again and add a new element, form. Let's get started. Taking a look at the elements of art, they all are color, shape, value, form, line, and texture. So we see here in the element of space what we did last week, positive space and negative space. This week, we're going to create some depth using space by adding items to the foreground, middle ground, and background. So we use lines shapes and combine those together to create texture and this week we'll be adding form making our shapes look three-dimensional this will help when creating depth so looking at foreground middle ground and background objects in a drawing or painting at the bottom are considered to be in the foreground. These appear to be closest to the viewer. Notice the tree that starts in the foreground is so big it goes all the way up to the top of the paper. The middle ground is the middle of the paper. Foreground's at the bottom, middle ground's in the middle. This is where objects start to appear further away. The background is the furthest away from the viewer. Foreground's closest, middle ground's in between, and background is where everything looks far away. They're drawn smaller, they're kind of blurrier, you can't see a lot of details. This is a landscape, a drawing or painting of the land, and we see this tree is in the foreground, these trees are in the middle ground, and the mountains are in the background. So let's combine these together to create a painting with depth. The bottom is the foreground. Here's the middle ground. And the top is the background. Remember anything I put in the foreground should be big gets a little smaller in the middle ground and very small in the background. This has already created some depth in my picture. I can also create a little more depth by overlapping. That's when one object covers part of another object. So we will use all these techniques to show depth in our art. For today's lesson, I was inspired by the artist Jen Aranyi. She has her own Etsy shop where you can buy her art today. So she is a modern artist. We'll be creating a landscape in this style with mountains and trees showing depth and then a colorful sky. Start by writing your name and class code in the bottom right corner. It needs to be on the front so when you take a picture of your art, I know whose picture it is. We will begin with the horizon line. It's good to use a black marker if you have it for this project since the drawing area will stay black and white. But if you don't, a black crayon will work or a pencil. Here's my horizon line going from one side to the other. Now I'm going to add a zigzag line for my foreground, middle ground, and background, but I'm going to use kind of a dashed line. So some are long, some are short. Notice it only goes one, two, three. Foreground, middle ground, background. I'm ready to create my mountains. I'm going to do this by drawing a kind of curved zigzag line. I'll start at the very edge of my paper and draw the first mountain peak. I'm not going to give it a sharp point go back down. Notice I'm not going all the way to the horizon line. I don't want all my mountains the same height, so that one's going to be a little shorter. This one a little taller and shorter again until I get to the other side. So none of them go all the way down to the horizon line. To create form or make them appear 3D, I'm going to start at the peak of every mountain and create kind of a curved line over. So 
starting at the peak, curve it, and connect. Go to the next mountain peak, curve it, and connect. Remember to pause the video anytime you need more time. Now my mountains already look a little bit more three-dimensional, but to give them a little bit better of a shadow and some texture, I'm gonna draw horizontal lines inside the shadowed areas. Diagonal lines. Now I'm gonna add some texture to my mountains with some little kind of squiggly short lines. Not too squiggly. This creates a little bit more texture on my mountains. Now I'm ready to add the trees. I'm gonna start in the background and just use the trunk. So just a short vertical line. If I want one in the middle ground, I'll start here. And again, go up so that it's overlapping the mountains. My nearest tree is in the foreground and it starts at the bottom and goes way up to the mountains. So notice all my trees are overlapping the mountains. To create the branches and texture of the trees, I'll use diagonal lines on one side and then the other. I'm getting a little bit longer at the bottom. So I start off short and then I slowly get longer. Short and then slowly get longer. Now on this big tree, my lines are very spaced out and it doesn't look very good. So now that I've got the length that I want, I can go through and quickly add more lines to create better texture inside my trees. And I'll do this with all of them. Now that all my trees are done, <clears throat> I'm ready to color the sky. Remember, you need at least three trees so that I can see you understand the ones in the foreground are big, middle ground or medium, and background are small. To color the sky, I'm going to use blue, purple, and pink. Jen Arani uh, created kind of nighttime galaxy colored skies. You can do this with markers like me, crayons, or paint. I'm just going to start with one color and color in some patches. So just here and there. When I do my next color, I'm filling in the white spaces and I'm overlapping my first color a little bit. Be careful not to get it on your mountains. Once you are finished coloring, Hit the back arrow to find the link for the Google Doc to turn in a picture of your art. Can't wait to see them.